Life in the Siberian coal town of Kisilyusk is dirty, dangerous, and deadly. Enormous black holes of open pit coal encroach into neighborhoods. Families live on the edge. Natalia Kamarova told us it never used to be this bad. She and other residents still heat their homes with coal. The nine mines here used to be further away, she said, but authorities let them expand. The mine owners are billionaires, but thousands upon thousands of families across Siberia live in awful poverty and can't afford to leave. This is her street in the winter, blackened in thick coal dust. Many in this city of 90,000 don't even have running water, even if in some places the pipes exist. People still use wells. Under President Vladimir Putin, there is now more coal produced in Russia than in Soviet times. Here in what's known as the Kuzbas region, investment has surged, but workers and their families have been left behind. As we walked on the mostly unpaved roads, people complained about lacking basic infrastructure. They were desperate to show us how their homes were falling apart. <laughs> Lilia Kazalova told us she has to do repairs constantly, as vibrations from the mine explosions and the shifting earth cause it to lean and slide off of its foundation. <laughs> Her husband, Victor, said the family gets by on his $800 a month miner's pension, which is actually almost triple what many pensioners get. The ground sometimes literally smokes here. Coal dust hangs heavy in the air especially after byproduct from the open pit mining gets dumped. And bone-jarring explosions shake people's lives every day. Two winters ago, frustrated by the pollution, by the noise, and most of all, by the lack of accountability from Russia's government, people here made an extraordinary plea for outside help to Canada. Justin Trudeau. In a video, families implored Prime Minister Justin Trudeau to let them come as environmental refugees. Canada said, sorry, only Russia's government can help. Vitaly Shestakov was part of the so-called Kislevos Canadians, as the group became known locally. He got involved after methane gas from the ground seeped into his home and almost killed his family. Only the cries of his cat saved them. It seemed like the plea to Canada might push authorities here to take action, but that hope was short-lived. These people have discredited Kuzbas and discredited Russia. The region's governor berated them at a news conference. The local mayor denied there was ever a promise to move people. But the recriminations weren't done. The environmental activist who encouraged residents to make that video, Natalia Zubkova, was hounded by Russia's secret police. First she left town, then she left Russia and is now in exile in Georgia. Alexander Gartman once sat in jail for eight months himself after clashing with officials over compensation for injured miners. He brought us to a cemetery next to a giant open pit Fitting, he says, since deaths in Siberia now outnumber births by two to one. 
варварское, ну, циническое идет уничтожение просто населения, людей. His grandparents immigrated to Regina in the 1970s. It's still his hope to get there one day too. Фактически Россия гибнет как страна, хотя она самая большая по территории. В ней очень природные ресурсы на первом месте. Взять газ, взять нефть, золото, серебро. Все, все в России есть. Для народа его нету практически ничего. Under Vladimir Putin's government, their lives have deteriorated, and those who fight back or demand something better are treated as criminals. I hope something good comes of this, Natalia said after our interview, that someone somewhere finally pays attention to us. Chris Brown, CBC News, in Kislovsk.